Throughout most of this course, I've been telling you about technologies that have existed for decades. They've stood the test of time. But this big data problem is new. And so the most important technologies to address the problem have just been invented recently. I'll tell you about my favorite. It's called Apache Spark. It happens to have been developed at the University of California, Berkeley. It's a data processing system that provides a simple interface for large data sets. The central abstraction is called a resilient distributed data set. It's a collection of values, or sometimes viewed as a collection of key value pairs. Now, the interface actually just supports very common operations, as you might see in the Unix operating system. Sorting, uniquing, counting, and piping one set of values into another process. It also supports the common sequence operations that we've used in Python, such as map, filter, and reduce. And it borrows some of the most important concepts from databases, join, union, and intersection. Now, a resilient distributed data set is less structured than a table in a database. It doesn't have many columns. It's just arbitrary values, or key value pairs. A data set of key value pairs is kind of like a two column table. The important thing about Apache Spark is that all of these operations can be performed, even if the data set is partitioned across multiple machines. So for instance, let's say I had a really big data set. Well, I'm actually going to use a small one as an example, the works of Shakespeare. So let's say we put each play on a different machine. Romeo and Juliet on one, King Lear on another, and etc. We'd still like to be able to do things like sort all the lines in all these plays, or map some function over all the lines. Apache Spark allows us to do that. The execution model for Apache Spark is that a central controller defines what processing should take place. But the program isn't executed where it's written down. Instead, the program steps are distributed to different workers that actually execute the program or a piece of the program on the data that they hold. So this notion of a resilient distributed data set is in fact not one thing in one memory, but instead is distributed in partitions to worker nodes. So different computers hold different parts of the data. A single driver program defines what transformations to take or what actions to take on the RDD. And a cluster manager actually assigns tasks to individual workers to ensure that this set of transformations and actions is carried out. So the program is defined in one place, but interpreted on another. The worker nodes actually perform the computation, but not the whole computation, only the part that is relevant to their particular partition. Now, sometimes they need information from other worker nodes in order to complete that task, so they do communicate values to each other. The final results are then communicated back to the driver program so that they can be displayed to the original user who issued the commands. So in a picture, the driver program sits here. The Spark context object is some interface for the cluster manager, which keeps track of all the workers and what data they store. This worker node might hold King Lear, while this worker node holds Romeo and Juliet. If the driver program wants a line count for all of Shakespeare's plays, the cluster manager will ask each worker node to count the lines in its individual piece of the whole data set. In a moment, we'll try a Spark example, a simple example where we find the last two lines of Shakespeare in alphabetical order. But before we learn how to do that in a Spark, Let's understand how we would do that using Unix tools. The program cat concatenates multiple files together. When applied to a single file, it just writes the contents of that file to standard out, which can be piped into another program as standard in. 
the sort program with the dash R option gives all of those lines in reverse alphabetical order. The blank lines end up at the end. But we can see the first few lines using the head program, which just writes the first few lines of its input to its output and ignores the rest. So here we can see the last two lines of Shakespeare in alphabetical order. You shall hear more, but if he had not been in drink, he would have tickled you other gates than he did, and yet a barful strife. Now let's learn a little bit of Apache Spark in order to perform the same processing. Within the Python program that defines the driver, there's something called a Spark context, which is used to distribute data to workers and also to define processing. An RDD can be constructed from the lines of a text file by just saying that I want the text file, shakespeare.txt, to be distributed to all the nodes in the cluster. X is now a name for an RDD, which is a representation of the entire data set. Let's say I wanted the lines in all of Shakespeare's play that would come last in alphabetical order when sorting all of them together. The sort by transformation and the take action are methods on this RDD. So I would say, for instance, x.sort by the line in decreasing order, so this is ascending equals false, and take two is an action that says, please just give me the first two elements of the resulting collection. When I start Spark, I get a prompt that looks identical to a Python prompt. The only difference is that I get some warnings written to standard error about the configuration of my system. But they're not important. What is important is that I automatically have this variable sc bound to a Spark context. Therefore, I can define a text file from shakespeare.txt and that will be distributed. Now, actually, in this demonstration, I'm just distributing it to my own laptop. But in lab, you'll get to distribute data sets to many machines. The works of Shakespeare just aren't large enough to justify distributed processing. But I wanted to show you how the interface works. Once x is created, I can sort it by the lines themselves. But I'll do it in descending order, and then take the first two of the result. And the result is the same two lines that we saw in the Unix version. You shall hear more, yada, yada, and yet a barful strife. So processing using Apache Spark isn't necessarily faster on a single machine, but can be much faster on multiple machines. In fact, currently, the fastest sorting that's ever been performed on a very large data set using commodity hardware was using Apache Spark. And when large data sets are used, Apache Spark provides several advantages. If a machine or hard drive crashes during execution, the system will recover automatically. Just send the information that was stored on that computer to some other computer and continue processing there. The cluster manager automatically reruns failed tasks. Speed can be greatly improved, both because parts of the computation are run in parallel on different machines, and because the cluster manager can avoid slow machines just by running multiple copies of a task and keeping the results of the first one that finishes. One of the central challenges in distributed processing is making sure that there isn't unnecessary data transfer. The cluster manager tries to schedule computation on the machines that hold the data already, so that that information doesn't need to be sent across the network. And perhaps one of the most appealing advantages of Apache Spark is that the entire computation is monitored. So you can see how much progress has been made in each step of the processing. The cluster manager provides a web interface that describes the jobs that are running and gives you pretty graphs that look like this. 